Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over a further explanation of Faraday's Law. You could call this maybe Faraday's Law and Explanation Part 2. Part 1, which you can link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video, has a more detailed explanation, but I wanted to go over an explanation of Faraday's Law using one of the excellent simulations from PHET Simulations. Whether you're teaching or learning, they have excellent simulations. There's their website. Check it out. They have lots of good simulations for math and the sciences. Now, this is Faraday's law. We're going to talk about Faraday's law. Faraday's law in words says this. It says that a voltage will be induced in a coil of wire when the magnetic flux through the coil of wire changes over time. So we have to change the magnetic flux or the magnetic field strength through that coil of wire over time. Now, this is the equation we use to calculate the magnitude <coughs> excuse me, of the induced voltage. The induced voltage is equal to minus n, n is the number of windings, and then that's times the magnetic flux. This is how we calculate the magnetic flux. It's the change in the area <coughs> times the change in the magnetic field strength divided by the time over which that change occurs. Now, we can see from this equation that there are four things, n, the number of windings, a, the area, b, the magnetic field strength, and t, the time that will affect the induced voltage. And we want to go through what's kind of what's the relationship between each of those factors and the induced voltage. And we're going to do that using one of the simulations, which I just talked about. And we're going to go to that simulation right now. Here it is. This is the simulation that we're going to use. You can see that here we have a magnet. We have a coil of wire. We have a compass to kind of show us, indicate the change in the magnetic field. We have a voltmeter, which will show us the induced voltage, and we have a faucet here, which we can turn the water on. As you can see, it's on like this, and that is going to make the magnet go round and round, which is going to change the magnetic flux through the coil, which is going to cause us to have an induced voltage. I can change the magnetic field strength. I can change the number of loops, the number of windings, and I can change the area of the coil. We're going to look at the time first. I'm simply going to turn the simulation on, and you can see when the magnet goes around, I can change basically the speed by adding more water or turning it off like that. And you can see when the magnet spins slowly, the change in the magnetic flux occurs over a long period of time. And therefore, there is very little induced voltage. But if I increase the, the speed at which the magnet spins, then the change in the magnetic flux is the same, except it occurs over a shorter period of time. Faster it spins, the shorter the change is, and therefore the greater the induced voltage. So I can turn it down, okay? And that's how that works. When we change the magnetic flux quickly, then we get a higher induced voltage or a greater induced voltage. And you can see that that means that the relationship between the time and the induced voltage is an inverse relationship. Okay, the lower the time, the greater the induced voltage. Because basically here, if you see from this equation, the time is in the denominator of this fraction, and we would be dividing by a smaller number, which would give us a greater result. So those two things, the time and the induced voltage, have an inverse relationship. Okay, let's go back to the simulation, and we're going to look at the magnetic field strength. So I am going to put this on about 50 RPMs. It's a nice kind of round number. I'm going to run the simulation, and I'm going to change the magnetic field strength. I'm going to bring this down a little bit to start with. I'm going to run this, and you'll look at the deflection here. And as I increase the strength of the magnet, you can see I get a greater deflection. It's not a lot greater, but it's a greater deflection. Obviously, if I turn the magnet off, so to speak, there's no change in the flux, so there's no induced voltage. And if I increase the magnetic field strength, then I get a greater magnet uh, induced voltage. So now we can turn that off, go back to our presentation, and you can see that with the magnet, with the magnetic field strength and the induced voltage, then there is a direct relationship. Greater magnetic field strength, greater induced voltage. And you can see that because that's on the top half of this fraction in the numerator, and therefore if I increase B, I'm going to be increasing the result, which is our induced voltage. All right, now let's go back and check out the number of windings. Okay, I'm going to leave this here at 100. 
leave that where everything is, and now I can increase the number one. And you can see if I make this two or three, I can make it up to three. It can't go more than three. So put that back to one. We'll turn the simulation on again. You can see getting this deflection, and you can see that if I increase the number one, it's from one to two, I get more deflection, more induced voltage, and now I get more. And I can also change it with a light bulb. And you can see if I bring the number of loops down, then the light bulb doesn't burn as brightly. All right, so that means that once again, the relationship between the induced voltage and the number of windings is also a direct relationship. If I increase the number of windings, then I'm going to increase the induced voltage. And once again, you can see that because this is basically a multiplier that's out in front, or it would be in the top half of this fraction if I wanted to put it in the fraction also. Okay, so those two are direct, and you can see I have the area here, so we already know now what kind of relationship the area is going to have, but let's go back and just check to see. All right, we have our waters turned on. We have the magnetic field strength at 100. I think I'll try this back at 2, just to have it nice in the middle there, and then I can change the area of the loop. You can see if I make this bigger, then the loop gets bigger. If I make it smaller, then the loop gets smaller, obviously. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this on again. I'm going to turn make the loops bigger, and you can see, let's go back to the voltmeter, I think it works a little better. You get that to about the first large mark on that scale, and if I increase it, it goes farther, I get a greater deflection in the needle, indicating that I get a greater induced voltage. Now it's not a lot different, but I think you can see if I have it like that, and if I bring it back down to 20%, then I get more and less induced voltage. So once again, that has a direct relationship with the induced voltage from that coil, is if I increase the area, then I increase the induced voltage. So there you go. That is how each of those four factors, that is the four factors, and that is how each of those four factors will affect the induced voltage. One, we have an, an indirect relationship, and the other three, we have a direct relationship. So let's just go back the simulation one more time. Let's see if we can make the bulb burn as bright as possible. Now this is always fun. Fun. Turn that on. And see, I have the magnet spinning very quickly, low time. I have the mag magnetic field strength. Is that the greatest? I have the greatest number of coils and I can increase the area. And therefore, I get the greatest induced voltage. And you can see that on the voltmeter, or you can see that on the light bulb. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.